A railway bogey A bogey is a chassis or framework that carries a wheelset, attached to a vehicle, a modular subassembly of wheels and axles. Bogies take various forms in various modes of transport. A bogey may remain normally attached or be quickly detachable. It may contain a suspension within it, or be solid and in turn be suspended. It may be mounted on a swivel. As traditionally on a railway carriage or locomotive, additionally jointed and sprung, or held in place by other means. While bogey is the preferred spelling and first listed variant in various dictionaries, bogey and bogey are also used. A bogey in the UK, or a railroad truck, will truck, or simply truck in North America, is a structure underneath a railway vehicle to which axles are attached through bearings. In Indian English, bogey may also refer to an entire railway carriage. In South Africa, the term bogey is often alternatively used to refer to a freight or goods wagon. The first standard gauge British railway to build coaches with bogies, instead of rigidly mounted axles, was the Midland Railway in 1874. Bogies allow the wheelsets to more closely follow the direction of the rails when traveling around a curve in the railroad. Displacements of a bogey Bogies serve a number of purposes, usually, two bogies are fitted to each carriage, wagon or locomotive, one at each end. Another configuration is often used in articulated vehicles, which places the bogies under the connection between the carriages or wagons. Most bogies have two axles, but some cars designed for heavy loads have more axles per bogie. Heavy-duty cars may have more than two bogies using span bolsters to equalize the load and connect the bogies to the cars. Usually, the train floor is at a level above the bogies, but the floor of the car may be lower between bogies, such as for a B-level rail car to increase interior space while staying within height restrictions. Or in easy access, stepless entry, low floor trains. A diagram of an American-style truck showing the names of its parts and showing the journal boxes to be integral parts of the side frame the journal boxes house plane bearings. Key components of a bogey include, the connections of the bogey with the rail vehicle allow a certain degree of rotational movement around a vertical axis pivot. With side bearers preventing excessive movement. More modern, bolsterless bogey designs emit these features, instead taking advantage of the sideways movement of the suspension to permit rotational movement. Commonwealth Bogey Commonwealth Bogey is used on BR Mark I and CIE Park Royals The Commonwealth Bogey was manufactured by the English Steel Corporation under license from the Commonwealth Steel Company in Illinois, United States. Fitted with SKF or Timken bearings, it was introduced in the late 1950s for all BR Mark I vehicles. It was a heavy, cast steel design weighing about 6. 5 long tons, with sealed roller bearings on the axle ends, avoiding the need to maintain axle box oil levels. The leaf springs were replaced by coil springs running vertically rather than horizontally. The advanced design gave a better ride quality than the BR1, being rated for 100 miles per hour. The side frame of the bogey was usually of bar construction, with simple horn guides attached, allowing the axle boxes vertical movements between them. The axle boxes had a cast steel equalizer beam or bar resting on them. The bar had two steel coil springs placed on it and the bogey frame rested on the springs. The effect was to allow the bar to act as a compensating lever between the two axles and to use both springs to soften shocks from either axle. The bogey had a conventional bolster suspension with swing links carrying a spring plank. Before bogey before bogey is used on BR Mark II and Irish Cravens the before bogey was introduced in 1963. It was a fabricated steel design versus cast iron and was lighter than the Commonwealth, weighing in at 5 long tons. It also had a speed rating of 100 miles per hour. Axle to spring connection was again fitted with roller bearings. However, now two coil springs rather than one were fitted per wheel. Only a very small number of Mark I stock was fitted with the before bogey from new, it being used on the Mark I only to replace worn BR1 bogies. The British Rail Mark II coach, however, carried the before bogies from new. A heavier duty version, the B5, was standard on southern region MK1 based emus from the 1960s onwards. Some Mark I catering cars had mixed bogies, a B5 under the kitchen end and a before under the seating end. Some of the before-fitted Mark IIs, as well as many before-fitted Mark I BGs were allowed to run at 110 miles per hour with extra maintenance, particularly of the wheel profile, and more frequent inspection. BT-10 Bogey BT-10 High Speed Bogey is used on MK3 The BT-10 Bogey was introduced on the British Rail Mark III coach in the 1970s. Each wheel is separately connected to the bogey by a swing arm axle. 
There is dual suspension, locomotives diesel and electric modern diesel and electric locomotives are mounted on bogies. Those commonly used in the North America include Type A, Blomberg, Height C and Flexicoil trucks. Steam on a steam locomotive, the leading and trailing wheels may be mounted on bogies like pony trucks or Bissell bogies. Articulated locomotives have power bogies similar to those on diesel and electric locomotives. Rollbach A Rollbach is a specialized type of bogie that is inserted under the wheels of a rail wagon slash car, usually to convert for another track gauge. Transporter wagons carry the same concept to the level of a flat car specialized to take other cars as its load. Archbar bogies in archbar or diamond frame bogies, the side frames are fabricated rather than cast. Modern side view of a SEPTA K car bogie tram bogies are much simpler in design because of their axle load and the tighter curves found on tramways mean tram bogies almost never have more than two axles. Furthermore, some tramways have steeper gradients and vertical, as well as horizontal, curves, which means tram bogies often need to pivot on the horizontal axis, as well. Some articulated trams have bogies located under articulations, a setup referred to as a Jacobs bogey. Often, low-floor trams are fitted with non-pivoting bogies and many tramway enthusiasts see this as a retrograde step, as it leads to more wear of both track and wheels and also significantly reduces the speed at which a tram can round a curve. Historic in the past, many different types of bogey have been used under tram cars. A maximum traction truck has one driving axle with large wheels and one non-driving axle with smaller wheels. The bogey pivot is located off-center, so more than half the weight rests on the driving axle. Mock-up of the pneumatic bogey system of an MP89 carriage used on the Meteor Metro, showing the two special wheel sets the retractable stadium roof on Toronto's Rogers Centre used modified off-the-shelf train bogies on a circular rail. The system was chosen for its proven reliability. Rubber-tired Metro trains use a specialized version of railway bogies. Special flange steel wheels are behind the rubber-tired running wheels, with additional horizontal guide wheels in front of and behind the running wheels, as well. The unusually large flanges on the steel wheels guide the bogey through standard railroad switches, and in addition keep the train from derailing in case the tires deflate. To overcome breaks of gauge some bogies are being fitted with variable gauge axles so that they can operate on two different gauges. These include the SU-2000 system from ZNTK Poznan. The Clemenson system is not a true bogey, but serves a similar purpose. It was based on a patent of 1883 by James Clemenson, and was once popular on narrow gauge rolling stock, E. G. On the Isle of Man and Max Northern Railways. The vehicle would have three axles and the outer two could pivot to adapt to curvature of the track. The pivoting was controlled by levers attached to the third axle, which could slide sideways. Some tanks and other tracked vehicles have bogies as external suspension components. This type of bogey usually has two or more road wheels and some type of sprung suspension to smooth the ride across rough terrain. Bogey suspensions keep much of their components on the outside of the vehicle, saving internal space. Although vulnerable to anti-tank fire, they can often be repaired or replaced in the field. An articulated bogey is any one of a number of bogey designs that allow railway equipment to safely turn sharp corners, while reducing or eliminating the screeching normally associated with metal wheels rounding a bend in the rails. There are a number of such designs, and the term is also applied to train sets that incorporate articulation in the vehicle as opposed to the bogies themselves. If one considers a single bogey up close, it resembles a small rail car with axles at either end. The same effect that causes the bogies to rub against the rails at longer radius causes each of the pairs of wheels to rub on the rails and cause the screeching. Articulated bogies add a second pivot point between the two axles to allow them to rotate to the correct angle even in these cases. In trucking, a bogey is the subassembly of axles and wheels that supports a semi-trailer, whether permanently attached to the frame. Or making up the dolly that can be hitched and unhitched as needed when hitching up a second or third semi-trailer. Radial steering trucks, also known as radial bogies, allow the individual axles to align with curves in addition to the bogey frame as a whole pivoting. For non-radial bogies, the more axles in the assembly, the more difficulty it has negotiating curves, due to will flange to rail friction. For radial bogies, the will sets actively steer through curves, thus reducing wear at the wheel flange to rail interface and improving adhesion. This has been implemented both by EMD and GE. The EMD version, designated HTCR, was made standard equipment for the SD70 series, first sold in 1993. However, 
the HTCR in actual operation had mixed results and relatively high purchase and maintenance costs. Thus EMD introduced the HTSC truck in 2003, which basically is the HTCR stripped of radial components. GE introduced their version in 1995 as a buyer option for the AC4400 CW and later Evolution Series locomotives. However it also met with limited acceptance due to relatively high purchase and maintenance costs, and customers have generally chosen GE high-add standard trucks for newer and rebuilt locomotives. Thanks for watching.